Good evening, I'm Amber Frias and welcome to Impeachment Wrap. Where does America stand? Our web only live show that wraps up everything you need to know about today's Senate impeachment trial. Now, this trial has now entered the next phase of its process and over the course of the next two days, senators will ask questions of both the House managers and Trump's defense team. This period of the trial could impact how senators ultimately vote on the possibility of having witnesses and documents. Karen Kaifa joins us from Washington with the latest. All 100 senators have an opportunity to ask questions today, but it is a handful of Republicans in particular that are getting a lot of attention. Senators like Mitt Romney of Utah, Lisa Murkowski of Alaska, Susan Collins of Maine, they are being eyed as potential votes that could make the difference between calling witnesses or this trial wrapping up relatively quickly. A more visible Chief Justice. The Senate will convene. As John Roberts, now the voice of senators, as he reads their questions over a 16-hour period. This is a question for the counsel for the president. Senator Feinstein asks the House managers. The senators ask. House managers and the president's no defense lawyers answering those questions and trying to push their cases. The defense saying there's no wrongdoing on behalf of the president and that the House managers have a weak case. There isn't any legitimate public interest, and they've totally failed to make that case. The Democrats doing all they can to convince at least Thank four Republican Justice senators sir, to vote yes on witnesses, no. such as John Bolton, the former National Security Advisor. To turn him away, to look the other way, uh, I think is deeply at odds with being an impartial juror. Each answer allowed approximately five minutes. To the president's counsel. Mr. And the Chief questions Justice, coming from one I or multiple senators. Desk on my behalf and also joined by Senators Loeffler, Lee, Kramer, and McSally. But after the two-day round of questions is finished, the senators and perhaps Roberts will finally have to confront a likely difficult vote on whether to call witnesses. And the timeline that's expected here is questions today and through tomorrow, setting up that debate over the witnesses on Friday. And you can see from the questions the senators have been asking just how they plan to use this question time. Democrats asking a lot of questions that prompt answers that point to the importance of witnesses, while Republicans asking a lot of questions that elicit answers that indicate they want to see this trial wrap up relatively quickly. In Washington, I'm Karen Kaifa. So it was a question and answer portion of the trial. One topic overshadowed much of the proceedings, witnesses. Senators shared their opinions with the press today. Take a listen. There have been a lot of discussions, but I have no idea what, how the votes are going to fall. I am pleased that I, along with Mitt Romney, Lisa Murkowski, um, and others worked very hard to get into the resolution of guaranteed vote on whether or not to call witnesses at this point in the trial. This parallels what we did with the 1999 trial of President Clinton. It was important that we hear both sides present their cases because otherwise uh, we wouldn't know who we might need, what gaps remain, and it's also very important that there be fairness, uh, that each side be able to select a witness or two. I think the, the questions that you heard today let, led off by Susan Collins is seeking more information that may help us get to the place where there may not be witnesses. But at this point, it's obvious that we don't have the votes yet. The need for witnesses just came out even stronger as you heard the back and forth um, between uh, the questioners and the managers and the president's counsel. Lead, ma lead, lead House impeachment manager Adam Schiff continued to explain today why Bolton hasn't been involved in the impeachment process until this portion of the trial, foreseeing lengthy litigation. We asked John Bolton to testify in the House, and he refused. Uh, we asked his deputy, um, Dr. Kupperman, to testify, and he refused. Fortunately, we asked their deputy, Dr. Fiona Hill, to testify, and she did. We asked her deputy, Colonel Vimmin, to testify, and he did. But we did seek the testimony of John Bolton, uh, as well as Dr. Kupperman, and they refused. When we subpoenaed Dr. Kupperman, he sued us, uh, took us to court. Uh, when we raised a subpoena with John Bolton's counsel, the same counsel for Dr. Kupperman, the answer was, Senator, you serve us with a subpoena and we will sue you too. 
Um, we knew, based on the McGahn litigation, it would take months, if not years, to force John Bolton to come and testify. Meantime, President Trump's defense and counsel are looking at the effects witnesses could have on this trial and those of future presidents. If we get down the road on the witness issues, let's be clear. It, will, it should not be. I certainly can't dictate to this body. It should certainly not be, though, that the House managers get John Bolton and the president's lawyers get no witnesses. We would expect if they're going to get witnesses, we will get witnesses, and those witnesses uh, would then, but all of that, just to be clear, changes the nature and scope of the proceedings. They didn't ask for it before. Others claim the choices made in this trial could set a precedent for how all future impeachment trials could operate. What is the precedent that is going to be set for what is an acceptable way for the House of Representatives to bring an impeachment of a President of the United States to this chamber? And can it be done in a hurried, half-baked, partisan fashion without, they didn't even subpoena John Bolton below. They didn't even try to get his testimony. And to insist now that this body will become the investigative body, that this body will have to do all the discovery, and that this institution will be effectively paralyzed for months on end because it has to sit as a court of impeachment while now discovery is done because it would be Ambassador Bolton. And if, if there are going to be witnesses, then the president would have to in order, they said. President Trump, meanwhile, has been active on Twitter in the last 24 hours. Last night, he tweeted, quote, why didn't John Bolton complain about this nonsense a long time ago when he was very publicly terminated? He said not that it matters, nothing. He continued to reference Bolton this morning, tweeting, quote, for a guy who couldn't get approved for the ambassador to the U.N. years ago, couldn't get approved for anything since begged me for a non-Senate approved job, which I gave him despite many saying, don't do it, sir, takes the job, mistakenly says, Libyan model on TV, and many more mistakes of judgment. Gets fired because frankly, if I listened to him, we would be in World War VI by now. And goes out and immediately writes a nasty and untrue book, all classified national security, who would do this, end quote. We know how some senators and President Trump feel about the possibility of witnesses in this trial, but we wanted to hear from you. The Bolton manuscript is the subject of tonight's 17 interactive feedback poll. Tonight, we've been asking, should formal, former National Security Advisor John Bolton testify in the impeachment trial? With 255 of you voting tonight, 61% say yes, 39% say no. Here's a look at some of your comments. Richard Carrier wrote on Facebook, quote, how can one have a trial without all the pertin pertinent witnesses? Yes, let them all testify, including the Bidens. And John Siebler also commented on Facebook, no, John Bolton should not testify. If his testimony has changed since what it would have been earlier, it can't be trusted. Now, thank you to all who participated in that poll and for joining us this evening on Impeachment Wrap, Where Does America Stand? Our show has spanned the last few months of the impeachment process, and if you'd like to catch up on previous episodes, head to KGET.com. I'm Amber Frias, and from all of us here at TV17, have a great night.